Alright, so we just finished up the uh, sheeting on the upper fuselage here. Um, so far, the way you see it, it is 8.8 .8 ounces. So that's pretty crazy. Anyway, it's got the uh, hole cut out for the nose gear. I still got to figure out uh, my mount situation for that. Shouldn't be a huge deal. There's not going to be a lot of weight on the nose at all. I got the mains pretty close to CG on this thing. So um, I did get my white foam nose cones cut out. Um, I'll have those tomorrow. They're at work right now. I got the wing cores cut. I got the spars for the wings and the tail cut. Um, I got the wing mounts cut. I got the hot wire guides cut. So this weekend, hopefully, I'll have some wing tail cores. And uh, yeah, got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. I got this to work on. I got to get my tires mounted, brakes bled. Um, what else? I'm going to put my lightweight drive shaft back in the car. Got to change the oil. Might put the oil cooler back in it. Get ready for the track next weekend. So rather than rush the last minute next weekend, I'm going to take care of that this weekend. Get all that out of the way. But I uh, hope to make some good progress on this. I want to get the forward fuselage glued to the rear fuselage this weekend. So we'll see how that goes. But getting something done on a work night is better than nothing. So you'll see it has kind of a sunken in shape right here. That's kind of normal. Um, once I get the nose cone on, I can kind of sand some of that out. It won't be perfect. It's Devron, super lightweight. It's not going to Top Gun. So. It's gonna look good, and a lot of that will, will be disguised with uh, Thunderbird colors and stuff will kind of break some of that up. But anyways, it's not bad. And like I said, most of that will sand out. There was some on the bottom too, and most of that's gone now, now that it's been sanded, so. Anyways, um, at this point, I'm kind of wishing I had just gone with a box instead of the formed skin, but it is what it is. I think this is lighter, and it uses a lot less glue, and the glue's expensive, so. Figured I'd try something, something new. So anyways, uh, for the turtle duck for sure, it needed to be sheeted just because it's round. But these, even this section down here, isn't that round on the real one. So it could have got, gotten away with just a box, like the rear fuselage, it probably would have been all right. But anyways, that's it for tonight. So I'm gonna put some spackle on this and uh, we'll come back later with more updates. All right guys, so, um, we're at the, the next step here. I think in order to successfully remove the belly pan, I need the fuselage to be glued together first. Um, just so it's stronger and it's not going to get twisted or anything and the belly pan will still fit after I cut it out. So instead of cutting out first and then gluing it together, I'm just going to do the fuselage first and then see how it goes. So anyways, that's going to kind of suck because it takes up a lot of room. It's a big fuselage, so it'll be this entire bench and then some. But um, anyways, as you can see, I did get my wing cores and my tail cores cut. They turned out not so great. Um, I ended up having to use a lot of spackle to fix the tips. You can still see some of the ridges in them, but they're not bad now. They look pretty decent, so... It's uh, nice and thin. I got a couple degrees of wash out in it, which is what I have in the big one. So you can see I've cut, uh, before I even hot wired these out, I cut the spar grooves in the core blanks. So those are already set to go. Um, I got the nose cone on last night. That's all spackled up. I got a whole bunch of parts over here. So these are for the wing roots because I couldn't, you can't hot wire cut a curved shape like that. So I had to hot wire cut them straight and I got to add, add these on and shape those to match the wings. These are the little fairings that go from the turtle deck to the verticals. And there's two because one set of these is for Andy. Here's his nose cone. And these are some templates. So these are the stab spars. So I'm going to glue some quarter inch carbon tube to these and then do a couple wraps of fiberglass strand on both ends to keep them nice and strong and stuck to the spar. So this is quarter inch birch ply, really strong. This will never break. Same thing, these are the gear plates, quarter inch birch ply. And then these are the wing mounts. 
which will glue in between the spars. So very much like I did on the big one. So seems to work pretty good for that. So we're using a similar structure. So the wing spars are also very similar to the ones in the big one. And basically we got, these are carbon fiber, a little less than an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths or uh, three thirty second. Um, anyways, pretty strong. They're flimsy this way, but really strong this way. So once they're glued in, but basically these grooves right here are for the gear blocks. So you'll glue the spars in. First you'll sheet the wings, glue the spars in. Then you'll hog out a big square right here in between these two spots. Then glue in the gear plate, which ties into the foam, obviously, and then to the spars. So these will be super solid gear plates. Unlike the F-18s, which had mediocre gear plates. So <clears throat> anyways, that's the wing spars. Um, I did weigh the, all the cores, so the wings and the vertical core <clears throat> are about 7 ounces. And then, like I said before, the elevators are laminated 6 millimeter Depron. So that's it for those parts. So I think, and also I'm considering um, recessing a little, little spot right here. <clears throat> Just real slight, and then putting a strip of 164th ply over the groove. That way the spar can kind of transfer any loads into the coral um, just a little bit better. Because the Depron sheeting, it's not like balsa sheeting. If it was balsa sheeted, I wouldn't even worry about it. But being Depron, there really isn't much strength to keep the spar from wanting to tear out of the wing. So aside from the um, adhesion to the sides in there, um, it is a pretty thin wing, so it's barely thick enough for the retracts. So it's actually probably fairly close to a scale thickness wing. But at the wing loading, we're going to have totally not worried about it. Should actually be a super efficient airframe. Um, so let's see. So I'm still thinking about that. I might I might not bother it. It might be okay. Especially with the gear plate kind of tying the spars into the wing. The wing will have half inch balsa leading edges, um, inch and a quarter trailing edge stock, and then the flap and aileron will have one uh, big piece of quarter inch balsa that runs all the way along the hinge line. So hopefully between all that and the skin, it'll be strong enough. So we'll see how it goes. But let's get this fuselage glued together, huh? So one thing to note <clears throat> as I've cut away this rear bulkhead right to those balsa stringers. So basically giving room for the ducting to fit inside of there. So like I said before, I think right now we're gonna do glass ducts just because it's gonna be really difficult to do a, a, a good flowing dip run duct. And it's just a pain in the butt. So still probably easier than making glass ducts, but glass ducts will flow better and actually become a structural part of the airplane once they're glued in here and I might even tie in the wing mounts to the ducts so that way kind of spread some of the loads around but uh I'm really hoping to keep this airframe at five pounds just a bare, bare airframe if I can do that I think I can keep the airplane definitely below 14 pounds somewhere between 13 and 14 pounds which for something as big as just crazy super light so Anyway, so I think what I'm going to do is um, I pretty much just glue this surface, both sides, and then right along here ties into these beveled surfaces. So those get glued on, and then the turtle deck becomes a pretty important part of the structure too, tying the front and rear fuselage together. So. That's going to have a big shelf right here, balsa stringers on the top, plus the skin. And even the, the duct, the forward duct, is going to attach to this wall. So hopefully all that ties together and creates a strong enough joint. So let's, uh, let's get it glued together. It's kind of a scary moment. <laughs> also, we're going to have to make sure that the forward fuselage angle is correct. Um, on the T-38, 
see if I can back away from the big one here. You notice how the forward fuselage is kind of dipped down compared to the rear. There's a better angle. So you need to make sure you capture that. If the nose is kind of pointing up too much, it just doesn't look right. And that kind of tends to happen a lot on T38 and F5 models. They don't quite capture that, that look where the, the inlets actually kind of point up a little bit and the fuselage goes below it. So it's kind of nice having a visual aid nearby to go to. Anyways, I'll probably just use some five minute epoxy to glue this together uh, and then we'll go from there. I'll probably cut the belly pan out, <clears throat> start playing around with the wing spars and maybe the inlets and stuff. So that's what's next. And uh, I'm gonna get a wait too once I put it all together. See where we're at. All right, so just for fun, like you typically do when you're building something, just kind of the wings just set on here for now, obviously. Um, kind of just check fitting the spars. I got to do a little trimming. These are my cores. They're the crappier ones. They're a little thinner than the other ones that I'm giving to Andy. So if these had been good, these spars would have been a lot closer to the right thickness. But anyways, that's got to trim them down just a little bit. But now you can see that spot where those foam wedges get glued to the ends. I got to glue those on tonight. Shape them. Uh, do spackle on the wings. Make sure they're all good because tomorrow I might try and sheet the wings tomorrow. So, And now you can see where those gear plates go right here. Um, CG is pretty close to the gear because like the big one I want to be able to do wheelies so the gear on this one are going to be right about here right in the center of these two spars and I think scale is probably right about here so moved quite a bit forward but eh, wheelies are way cooler than scale gear placement and then I've obviously cut the belly pan out and I set the fan in there for now and just kind of cut a hole haphazardly in the bulkhead just so I could put the fan in there. I think the fan's actually gonna go a little bit farther forward, probably somewhere around here. I'm trying to keep that weight close to the center of the mass. But uh, anyways, yeah, fuselage glued together. Looks freaking awesome. I did have, I, I glued this and then I ended up cutting these apart and then re-gluing it. So um, once I had the top glued, I glued the bottom first and then, then I glued the top parts. And what happened was, is that these inlet floors were kind of like this. So I cut a little section out and re-beveled it and then glued it down. So anyway, it's got some spackle on there right now. Lots of spackle. Speaking of spackle, if you want to know what I'm using, it's Sherman Williams Shrink Free. This stuff's awesome. Sands really well. Super lightweight. And, uh pretty cheap too so anyways um looks awesome and just so you know wings do look skinny but i got uh let me show you over here i have this inch and a quarter um aileron stock so now you can see that the wings don't look so skinny and there's a half inch that goes in the front so anyways I gotta get these glued on and shaped tonight. Spackled and I think I'm gonna call it a night. Um, I've been working on my car all day. And it's almost 10 o'clock, so I think I'm pretty much done. So I need to get that done today, that way tomorrow I can keep moving on the on the wings. So but I just kinda wanted to get the fuselage together, get the wing pan cut out, the belly pan, and just kinda do some dry fitting just for fun. But uh Pretty stoked. This thing is going to be freaking sweet. Just figured I'd show you guys what I'm doing really quick. So like I said, I just bonded these on with some foam safe. And now we just got to kind of chop off the excess and then sand them in. So quick and easy. And then once I skin it, I'll skin up to the edge of that instead of that. So anyways, all right, now I'm good. We'll see you guys tomorrow.